<clears throat> the scum is real. It went splendidly. The intricate patterns on the harp depict the stars, the moon, and butterflies, the hallmarks of the goddess Desna. Okay. Let's, uh, suppose we should look to see what's in here. Grab you and... Okay, well, I guess that's... Okay. Greetings. Valiant stranger who has just burst into my life. I am the master of this house. Count Daron Kale, Myriad Mellifluous Monikers Arunde. No need to introduce yourself. I find remembering insignificant details, such as the name of passing acquaintances, such a bore. I don't like you even more. Wow. Bonafide blue bloods and unparalleled aristocracy. All this makes me itch to do something really crass. Ooh, like blow my nose on the curtains. What are you waiting for, my squamous squire? The curtains in this room are velvet, but we have some excellent silk ones with gold thread elsewhere in the house. Take your pick. My soft furnishings are yours to do with as you wish. I'm quite sick of the place, truly. I shall either sell it or burn it to the ground and build a new mansion in its place. Uh, okay. Now that we've finished with the niceties, tell me this. How did all those thrice damned demons end up at my soiree? Cadabra's lies in ruins, Discari killed to earn the live, the Warstone has been captured, and you're asking me why demons gate crashed your party? Cadabra's in ruins. Descari. Well, 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 and I was already lamenting the lack of excitement at my little banquet. Although it must have been tolerable enough if we didn't get notice of a great hulking demon attacking a dragon just outside the window. It seems as though Descari's occasion was altogether more of a crush than mine, if you will pardon the pun. Hey, what should I know about you, Count, apart from the fact that you're highborn and very rich? As a child, I had my very own pony, but I always dreamed of having a lamb. I was never allowed one. Sheep were seen as peasant animals, utterly unsuitable for the scion of a noble line. The trauma haunts me to this day. I think of it every time I have roast lamb for dinner. I'm sorry that happened to you. Such a sad story. I had not even the slightest intention of upsetting such a lovely child. Ah. Uh... I'm not lovely. Some people have even called me a scarecrow before. That's patently absurd. Why, you can't possibly be a scarecrow with a crow following you around. I'm sorry if I failed to sate your curiosity. I loathe talking about myself to people I don't know, even more to those I do know. The only thing worth knowing, aside from the fact that I am highborn and filthy rich, is that I dislike Puritans and demons in equal measure. Well, perhaps demons a tad more. You don't seem very concerned about the city's fate. I have no friends here whose untimely demise I would care to mourn. The only alarming thing is how easily all this happened. I don't care for the thought that demons could come calling at my door at any moment. And just think, everyone had so much faith in the wardstones gifted by Iomade's herald, and in the might of our tamed dragon. As if there had been no Dresden or a dozen other routes where the demons overcame every defense. Okay, I'm getting weird vibes from this guy. The Arendas are one of the most ancient and noble families in Mendiv. They are related by blood to Queen Galfrey herself. The Count is the last remaining member of his dynasty. The rest all perished around ten years ago. 
In the tragedy at the family seat, Heaven's Edge, the demons got past the defenses and massacred everyone inside. I thank you for providing your friend with that helpful summary, my lady. I believe I've seen you before with that hilarious buffoon, Horgus Gworm. I sincerely hope you are not engaged in any kind of sordid arrangement with him. The thought of something so splendid in proximity to something so grotesque makes me feel quite ill. You deserve a better fate than that, no doubt. I'm getting weird uh, Lorenzo vibes from him. Not Lorenzo. Lawrence. From Fire Emblem 3. Uh, Fire Emblem 3 Houses. Your civility knows no bounds, Count. I most assuredly do not have any arrangement with Master Gworm. Expect a little gratitude for saving you. Of course, of course. Where are my manners? There. You can also poke about the house and claim whatever takes your fancy. Though I imagine some of you already had that in mind. Hmm. You can go to the Defender's Heart. It's under the protection of Erebeth, Terabane, and the Eagle Watch. I thank you for the invitation. But I am not quite as desperate as I may seem. At times, it is better to be surrounded by the repugnant mugs of demons than the sour and dour physiognomies of Iomade's righteous paladins. What about my physiognomy? Sour enough for his lordship? Don't worry, another few minutes with the dazzling count here, and it'll sour like weak old milk. What's this? An attractive paladin with a sense of humor? You're a veritable walking scandal. Either way, my mansion is now safe. I have a pair of half-decent guards. I just need to drag them out of the storeroom and bring them to their senses. I ordered them to drink a love potion, you see? For reasons which seemed extremely witty at the time and in the state of inebriation I then found myself in. They can guard the house while the valorous paladins beat back the demon assault. They will beat them back, yes? As regards myself, I feel like stretching my legs. I know rudimentary divine spells, I am no friend to demons, and I elevate any society that I deign to grace with my presence. I shall accompany you, only for a short time, of course. I have no desire to remain at the vanguard for a protracted period. What say you, my ephemeral but highly diverting acquaintance? After all, Lord Descari spoiled my party. I now burn with the desire to spoil his. Not the biggest fan of him? I don't know what to think of him. Uh, thoughts? I don't like this guy much at all. Not even because of his personality, but just... I sense something dark about him. I guess thumping him one next time he comes out with more aristocratic witterings is not allowed? All the more reason to take him with us. If we don't kill him, the demons surely will. He has all these friends at his party, and he still looks so lonely. We can take him with us. Maybe it will make him feel better? The Count's presence can only benefit us. I think we should say yes. Huh? What? You're asking about whether to take this boy with you? The question lies outside the bounds of my interest. By the way, did you know that the young scions of noble families often sponsor the research of young scientists? What laudable passion for knowledge. True, the size of their donations bears a direct correlation to the hazardousness of the experiment being conducted. He doesn't look like a whiner, and he can hold his own. <laughs> I so forgot he about him. You know what? Deal. Capital. Good acquaintances that begin and end at just the right moment often leave the most pleasant memories. Wouldn't you say? <clears throat> Anyways. Let's see what we can do. Hey, 
Thanks, Lan. You're so awesome, Lan. Here we go. The mongrel did it. <clears throat> Is there anywhere else I haven't seen yet? No? Okay. Okay, um, at this point, I think I'm just going to head back up to here. There's multiple things I need to do. Uh, if you know who's in the city, maybe you can tell me something about Count Arande? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Why not? Everyone knows the story, you see. Uh, but you could say that I'm the one who founded it in a way. The, Rond uh, the Rondes are a very wealthy and ancient line. They hail from the outlying areas of Canabras. That's where the Arande family seat is, along with their ancestral lands. In the past, if Mendev was ever feuding with Sarkoris, or some clan from there was causing trouble, the Count and Countess, Countess Arande were the ones... And defend it. The main residence was called Heaven's Edge. It still stands to this day, north of here, on the road to, toward Dezen. But no one lives there now. Around ten years, uh, ten years, uh, ten or so years ago, there was a grand celebration held at the estate. The mother and the guardian of the current count invited uh, the great and the good to celebrate his birthday. The entire Ronde clan was there, as well as many other nobles. And then, without warning, the demon struck. Clearly, they couldn't ignore such a perfect opportunity to cut down so many of uh, mended great dynasties in one fell swoop. There was even a chance that the queen herself would make a, an appearance, for she was related to the count as well. Well, when no news came from the estate, a troop of inquisitors was sent to investigate. They forced open the gates and discovered a, a manor full of corpses. They all perished. Uh, the servants, the guards, the guests, including some of Iomide's chosen clerics and paladins. The demons had unleashed a magical plague, terrifying and strange, the likes of which hadn't been seen before or since. And among all this was young Jaren Arande, the only survivor. The Count had a talent for divine magic since youth, healing magic in particular, and that must be why he didn't die along with the rest. Huh. He couldn't explain how he survived the disease. I saw him that day when they brought him into the city, pale and barely conscious of his surroundings. So that's the story. And since then, Heaven's Edge has stood abandoned, sealed off to the outside world. People are still afraid to go near the place. Are you uh, Staunton Vane's brother? Yep. Uh, where he goes, I go. That's how we've always done it, even before the world wound. I forge the armor, he goes into battle and breaks it. He brings it back to me, and I repair it and make it better than before. Oh, how was Staunton to, how was Staunton to blame for the fall of Dresden? I've told this story so many times already. Well, telling it one more time wouldn't kill me. And Dresden was built after the First Crusade, back when it seemed like victory was ours for the taking, and that did, and that the demon invasion would soon be at an end. The population of old Sir Chorus was thoroughly diminished, and many of them hoped to see their hard fighting repaid with a small plot of unclaimed land. Dresden was a fortress built on all our hopes, and on Mendev's ambition, though, uh, though you're not supposed to say that out loud. Uh, what a city it was, Z. 
You can't even imagine. I was. It was built by the finest engineers from the Five Kings Mountains. Queen Galfrey spared no expense. <laughs> okay, John Hammond. <laughs> spared no expense. Um. <clears throat> Uh, Dresden was meant to be the capital of the crusade movement, a monument to its glory and a beacon of hope for all Galeria. Heroes were drawn there to seek fame and glory, and they came from all over. Haldor, Garand, Tianxia, uh, I couldn't list them all. A relic known as, as the Sword of Valor was kept there, the manner that had been carried into battle by Iomade herself, back when she was still human. Oh, that banner protected the city and kept the demons from teleporting inside its world. As long as the banner was in its place, Dresden was invin invincible. Or so we thought. But when the world wound suddenly expanded, the demons launched a new onslaught, and folks started saying it was time to declare the Second Crusade. Dresden was unassailable. Until young, one young officer was tempted by a beautiful woman. He convinced him that the banner shouldn't be hanging in the city, and that its rightful place was on the battlefield. She whispered honey words. Oh, sorry, honey words and um, and uh, about honey words about glory and valor, and convinced him that he could be a hero as great as Iomade herself. And the poor fool believed her. He rounded up some of his hot-headed friends and carried the banner outside of the city gates on an unauthorized foray. The demons slaughtered them within seconds, but for some reason the courageous ringleader was spared. A whole army teleported into Dresden. It was a bloodbath. <sighs> well, not just any demon, it was Minago, that foul wretch. She gave us a lot of grief in Canabras, too. Just don't ask me what I was doing while my brother was off having uh, trysts with, the be with that beast. And why I didn't save him from his own stupidity. Who could have guessed it would end like this? I failed my brother, that's the truth. I blame myself every day. Looking at his plight, so that's the story. Damn. Well, anyways, uh, show me your worst. That's unfortunate, man. Okay, um. So far, uh, the magical items. I think I'm gonna. I'm, I think I'm actually gonna magical and cold iron items. I think I'll just put into my inventory, like my jet, my personal stash. So that way, just in case, uh, for the time being anyways. So that way I can decide whether or not try and get some new stuff. You are a crossbow user. Are you a cleric? Are you a cleric? You're an oracle. Oh. Might as well up your con. Okay. Now one thing's for sure. The place has been sanctified. Okay, we definitely need to rest here, though, so we can get rid of all the corruption. Or, oh, corruption's already gone.
<clears throat> uh, the defender's uh, the defender's heart uh, greets you with the unexpected liveliness. Beyond the walls of the tavern, the once bustling and festive city lies in ruins. But somehow, none of that can be felt within these walls. People in the room are taking, uh, talking, laughing, and raising toasts, even softly singing. It doesn't look like the mm, like typical tavern revelry, but nor is it the grim vigilance of recent days. Hey, come! Let me properly introduce you to Elena, Jana, and Curl, the fearless warriors of the League of the Inspiring Cart. <laughs> it was me who convinced Erebeth to use what what uh, Jana, Jana, Curl, and uh, and Elaine found for our little party. If you look out the window, you might think the end times have come in a bit, and the abyss has devoured us all. I thought some simple pleasures, uh, good food and good company could keep the gloom at bay. I understand. We need to continue living and fight, and no, we need to continue living and fighting. However, hard that might be, even amidst the chaos that has fallen, uh, fallen, has befallen the city. Allow me to, to declare my support for Sailor's decision as well. Uh, experience tells me that we should shed no tears until after our victory. Mm, we start to mourn the fallen wall uh, while the battle is still raging. We'll be jeopardizing all our efforts. Now is the time for rest. We'll bury the dead after the last demon has been driven from Canabras. Hey, are we just going to sit here with grim faces? I say we get to know each other a little better. Yeah, so we have better reasons to toast. Tell me about you and your order, Elaine. Uh, as stories go, it's not very entertaining. I was born far to the south in Andorin. I lost my parents early. I led the life of a simple mercenary, but often questioned the path I had chosen. I am proud of my sword skills. I enjoy training and drills, and I am not afraid of battle, but risking my life for coin, it takes a special mindset to choose uh, that lot with no regrets. You have to want to risk your blood. I saw too, mm, uh, I saw too many of my friends die, and I wonder if it was worth it. So in the end, I decided to choose another path. Now, if I'm going to lay down my life, at least it will be for a good reason. That's how I ended up in Mendev and became a squire for the Hound Hearts. It's a small order. By tradition, it never has more than 12 members, and a new member is only knighted after one of the elders dies. We patrol the lands along the Warstone line and provide aid to travelers and settlers. Unfortunately, death is common among the Houndheart. I became a full knight two years ago after laying my mentor to rest, but I'm content with my choice. My place is among the Crusaders. Yay! Oh yeah, one of the reasons why I actually came back here is not only to sell, but I have some items in my chest that I need to grab, that I meant to grab before I left, that are going to help me out, especially as a temp here. <laughs> At least I think so, anyways. Um, have you been serving in the Eagle Watch for long? I signed up four days before the demon attack. Am I lucky or what? I'm an apprentice of a famous fencing master from Mivon, and I learned a thing or two. Oh, sounds almost like, uh... Arya's Arya from, uh... Yeah, no, never mind. Oh, that one felt good. That felt good, too. I popped, popping my neck. Oh, that felt that felt really good. I'm not sure if you guys heard it, but it felt good. And I learned a thing or two from him. Believe me, as I soon got bored, mm, uh, bored of fighting off bandits and getting involved in the petty squabbles of the bickering river kingdoms. I wanted a proper challenge, and you can't find a better place than Mendev. And and what do you know? At the moment I arrived, the demonic evasion began. My father would say that's no accident. Fate brought me here. What about you, Curl? I just did what everyone else was doing. I grew up in the slums where everyone stole a little or maybe smuggled or uh, guarded stashes. So, 
Hmm. Uh, but I never killed anybody, and I never did anything really bad. I got caught stealing, and when they made me choose between prison and the condemned, well, of course, I didn't want to go to prison. I'm not that good of a fighter, but as uh, Norgorbor, uh, Norgorber was my witness, weird name, a thief can also be useful in a war against demons. I've always been a good scout. I can sneak under the nose of any monster, but I don't know where my friends are now. We got se separated when the demons rampaged through the city. Pin up, friend. Uh, whoever, mm, whoever you were in the past, you're our friend now, and a crusader. Your skills will be useful to us. You'll see. How do you all know Sila? I met my noble sister on the road up to Canabras. I was returning from the south from my fiance and was happy to be in the company of a paladin of Iomede. We said our farewells at the city. We said our farewells uh, at the city gates, and I went north along the road to Dresden to my orders camp. Hmm, the demons attacked us from there at the same time they struck Canabras, but we managed to fight them off. We hurried to the city as aid and joined forces with the Eagle Watch. All my fellow hound hearts were wounded during the battle on the streets. I'm the last knight of my order who can still fight. Oh, good to see Sila again. Every loyal heart counts these days. I met Sila at a tavern on Canabras, before the attack, of course. He was one of the few who would uh, sit at a table in the Condemned. Knights usually don't even look at us, but Sila is different. I knew it, I knew it the moment I saw her. And that's what made me notice Sila too, so I sat down to talk to her. I never understood why everyone created the Condemned so horribly. I uh, treated the Condemned so horribly, sorry. And I still don't. Uh, our Curl is a great lad, so often that night... Uh, so after that night, Sila and I went around the taverns together every day. Mendev is an amazing place. People from all over the world come here for glory, redemption, or to help those in trouble. And they always find each other. This might be the best place in the world to find, uh, find like-minded people and friends. That was a toast, in case you didn't notice. <laughs> Sila, did you call me over just because, or is something the matter? I didn't just want to talk about today. Uh, I didn't just want to talk about today's celebration. You see, Elaine is in trouble. I want to help him. Elon, Elaine, Elon. Oh God. Anyways, and I don't know anyone else in the city I can turn to. His fellow knights were all wounded in battle. Bad idea, sister. I told you I don't want to bother anyone. I bet anyone else with my problems. I need to handle them on my own. Oh, come on. Hiding your sadness from your friends is no way to live. Tell me more. In all truth, I do not wish to impose. My problems are just minor troubles. The paladin of Iomade and her friends certainly have more important things to do, especially now that Canavaris has been overrun with demons. If I've learned anything in life, it's that there's nothing minor about good and evil. Take the three of you, for example. It seems like all you did was save one cart from some lesser demons. But look how many people are happy now. That feat will never be sung, uh, sung, uh, sung up in songs. But who knows? Maybe thanks to this one joyous hour of peace and rest, the defenders of Nabris will find the strength to protect the city. I talk too much, don't I? Well, Zerlon, I want to help you, and my reputation as a holy warrior of Iomade won't suffer if it's more of a minor adventure than a glorious feat. All right. Good God. I, for I continue to forget how much talking there is. <laughs> but you know what? It's I'd say it's worth it. I'd say it's worth it. Uh, I will. I will. I will say I hope I'm not actually boring you guys with all the talking. <laughs> All right, I'll explain. The life of a you know, the life of a crusader has given me more than just a purpose and a chance to serve a righteous cause. When I abandoned the life of a mercenary and came to Mendiv, I gained something else I never expected. It's here that I met. May all the lazy and ladies here forgive me. The finest girl in all the world. It's a miracle she found any love in her own heart for a bu uh, bungler, a bungler like me. But I'm not about to let this miracle go. Not even the demon lord Daskari and all his demon army can stand in my way. 
Luckily, my beloved is now safely away from Cadabras. For half a year, I've been setting up my courage to propose to her. I even ordered a ring from Derek Sunhammer. The best jeweler. This is gonna be a fetch quest. I can already feel it. This is gonna this is a fetch quest. Uh, the best jeweler in Mende. Indep independent nightly orders live mostly off donations, and I'm not what you would call rich. Uh, but I uh, I so want to make Kiana, ha uh, Kiana happy. Oh, it took me three months to find a jewel the same shade as her eyes, and twice uh, that long to scrape together enough money. Master Derek's work was worth it. And I lost the ring during the demon attack, and I'll probably never find a worthy replacement. The ring is most uh, likely still at the Hound Hearts camp outside the city. Alon and his friends didn't have time to pack up their camp. First, the demons ambushed them, and then they rushed off to help Canabras. I think we should at least go there and check. Not right now, of course, but once the situation in the city is under control. Uh, what could we run into at this camp? My friends and I killed two large demons attacking the camp, then rode straight to the city without spending any more time cleaning up the rest of their band. It was only a few imps, but they might still be at the camp. Of course, this was a while ago. Our camp was attacked at the same time as the Wardstone in the main square. And I haven't been back there since. Fine. I will help. And thank you for agreeing to help. Alon is a good man and a true knight, and I think the world would, should repay those who are so devoted to doing good. Let's help him, and so we can propose to his beloved the way he wants. Dila, I hope you can convince Arabet to let me go with you when you do this. I don't want to be parted from my friends. Of course, if the League of the Inspiring Card has, some, has come together in this dark hour, we must continue onward together. Okay. Ah. Oh, right. Um... Uh, one second, Jet. <laughs> 